So returning to our fantasy landscape, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my guides, which is command semicolon. There we go. The guides show me where my sketch edges were, and it shows me that I don't have any uh, gaps in my coverage, right? If I had any gray showing within my guides, that would mean I have to recompose or bring in new assets because you want to make sure you fill up the space. Because I've brought everything in, I don't really need all this extra space anymore. But I might want some of it. That gives me a little working space. So I'm going to use the crop tool because I don't need 30 by 40 inches by 350 pixels per inch if I'm only printing around 11 by 14 inches. And I'm just going to, like a transform box, bring that in leave a little bit of gray space around for now. Before we turn it in, we will um, likely crop a lot more out. Probably crop down right to our parameters. Okay, and now let's go over what steps we used. So I used my sketch, which was based on five sources to put in these different elements from background to middle ground to foreground. And then I played with direct image adjustments, going to image adjust and playing with their levels for their lightness and darkness and playing with their um, color balance to help them kind of sit in the same place. I haven't quite done that with this foreground element yet. And then I started to erase around on the organic elements with a soft edge and get rid of those really hard edge seams, which you see off the frame there. But sometimes using the magic wand, sometimes using the lasso, but always using a 100% eraser with a soft edge, so 0% hardness. But it leaves these little echoes that we're going to have to clean up. And you'll see that on the mountains as well. right? And sometimes you see little noise. And then I still have some hard edges I need to clean up like this. And I'm actually not wanting this whole kind of city back there necessarily, but we'll, we'll look at that. So let's just continue that process as we clean up and refine it. So I'm going to take this foreground element. I have auto select layer turned on. I can turn my sketch off now. I don't need to worry about that because now I'm just working with my composition. And the first thing I'm going to do is play with adjustment levels and play with the mid-tone slider. And I want the, it to get brighter as we come forward. And then I'm going to play with the color temperature, with color balance. I'm going to warm this up a little bit, this ice. So it still feels like ice, but it feels like ice under this sky. So bring a little bit of the reds into the midtones, bring a little bit of the yellows into the midtones, and even push a little bit of green. And then I can even play with the shadows, which I think I want. Yeah, bring a little bit of red into, but not too much. All right, I can hit Command Z and see if that color change helped. I think it did. These are subtleties. And now I can use my large eraser at 100% opacity, about 400 pixels large, 0% hardness, 100% opacity, 100% flow, and start knocking this edge back. Because I think I want this kind of water source at the very bottom with those reflections, but I don't want the sky because my horizon lines up here, not down there. And my water tower has to stick to something. It has to be attached somewhere. Now I have to be careful with my soft edged eraser not to bite into my my glacier, my ice structure at all. I don't want that to be soft. I want that to be crisp and hard edged. And I'll do kind of a close um, cleaning up of it later. Okay, now I can turn that layer off. And now I'm looking at 
my water tower and I have to do the same kind of thing. To soften some of these hard edges. And any of this kind of debris that's there. Now, how this is kind of a trickier issue. So how do you soften when the edge is that tight? So obviously I can't use this eraser to soften because it gets rid of my water tower. So I'm gonna show you now how to do a, um, a refined selection. So basically we're gonna use the magic wand. It's gonna get rid of all this little uh, noise as well, left over from the little wires in the photo. And I'm gonna select the space, the empty space around my water tower. You guys see that? So it's a lot of empty space. If I just hit delete now, nothing's really going to happen because I've already deleted all that. So if I just hit delete, nothing really changes, right? It's a very sharp border on that pixel. But what I want it to do is to just bite away at the edge of those pixels a little bit and gradate them, what's called feathering them. So what I do is I'm going to say select and mask up here in the selection options. And you can do this with a lasso selection, you can do it with a magic wand selection, any selection. So when you hit select and mask, you get properties on the side. These are the properties of the selection. They've made this a little bit more complicated than it was in, in previous versions of Photoshop where it was just called refine edge. But it still has the same tools. The first one we want to deal with is the edge detection. We want a radius that's a that's less than 15. Right, so I'm gonna, yeah, I stick with around 10. I don't wanna smooth it. Smooth it would take out any kind of bumps. And so there are some bumps in a water tower. I wanna leave it in, all the kind of rickety um, you know, changes here. I don't want these to get unnaturally smooth. But I do want to feather the selection, which means it's going to soften the pixels. And I'm gonna go, because I'm at a high resolution here, I want to soften the pixels probably about four pixels. And then I'm going to grow the edge. So if my edge radius is 10 pixels, I want to shift the edge to the positive, which means to grow it about 20% or so of that. Okay. Then I'm going to say OK. Now all this does is change the edge. So notice it was here. Now the edge has shifted to here. But it's, it's gone a little too far. So if I hit delete now, it softens, right? And actually, it would probably work okay, but it bites a little bit too much from my from my water tower. It does get rid of the blue. Actually, I could probably get away with that. But maybe it softened it a little too much, right? and we lose a little bit of that structure. So I'm going to go back in my history to before I did that, all those clearings, all those deletes, and I go back to the select and mask options. And I'm gonna knock this back. So I'm gonna knock my radius back to maybe seven, knock my feathering back to maybe two pixels, pretty powerful. I always set it to remember my settings. <laughs> because it all depends on kind of the resolution you're working with. And I'm going to shift the edge about 8%. So now I overshot it before. This time I'm going to undershoot it. Oh, and this looks perfect. Because look, it's biting away and getting rid of all that noise and still keeping the edge pretty sharp. All right, very good. I'm not going to worry about that blue color quite yet. That's a different tool I can use for that. Okay, now how do I get all these uh, buildings? So I can play with whether I want the buildings or not. I don't think I want the buildings at all, actually. So I'm going to turn that foreground element on, but I'm still going to be erasing from this element below. I'm going to use that big eraser. And I'm just going to try knocking those down. Knocking the man-made structures out. Okay. 
and we have a road there. And I don't really want to just erase the road yet because I like I like how how the foreground kind of rocks are coming in. But that road might get covered up by a new element. All right. And now I think, is there anything else I might want in this composition to kind of make it work? Do I like the placement of everything? I do want to see some of that, that water reflecting. Yeah, I think I'll move that over a tiny bit. Okay. And then you can ask yourself, do I want any other kind of foreground elements? I thought it might be fun to put some other kind of rock element in, maybe to cover up the road. So like this stuff, that might be interesting. Give us another focal point. So let me bring that in. And this helps us remember just the steps for placing something. So first I'm gonna hit return, place the smart object. With the lasso, just rough select around the things I want. I might even, it's always good to grab more than you need. See, I like this tree, I'll even grab that. All right, so I've got all of that. Then I'm going to hit Command J, duplicates it on new layer, turn off the smart layer move this down behind my foreground element, Command T, transform it. So I want to move it down behind the uh, water tower too. Find a place for it. Yeah, about there in my composition. So this is kind of a nice transition spot. It actually helps the road a little bit. And then I take my, well, I'll Command T and I can play with its scale. How big, how small, it probably be a little bit smaller in the background here. And now I'm going to take my eraser, take out this hard edge on the blue. And before I do too much, I want to play with the levels and the adjustment. So image adjustments, levels. Let's darken this one up a tiny bit in the midtones. I can even dim its highlights by using what are called the output levels. So basically limit the, the brightness of it and limit the darks a tiny bit. Helps it to fit the scene a little. And then I can go to color balance, make it look warmer, kind of warm reddish light to fit with the water tower. I'm gonna make the highlights a little bit cooler. There we go. And now I can try the magic wand with contiguous turned on. Actually, I continuous turned off because of that tree. I don't think it's blue is that many other places. Yeah. And then just hit delete, do a rough cut of all the blue, then do selected mask to soften that. See all the space around the tree. And then soften that, that deleting. And then I can do the same thing with the white. Right? But I don't want to delete from down here, so I use my lasso now, hold down Option, and say, 
I only am interested in the white being deleted from the tree in the sky. 